BBC Radio Nottingham. If I may ask you a rather personal question, your best asset, I mean, we're talking on your, your own body, what would be your best asset? Or maybe there's a part, or maybe even more than one part, that you would say you don't like about your body. It might be the bit that you always try and hide away or disguise in some way. Well, it turns out you are well and truly not alone. Uh, there is a Nottingham woman who felt pretty much the same as you, really. She launched a campaign to help others to learn to love their bodies. With me, Jenny Jones and Nicola McKitten, who are actually from the Nottingham Hellfire Harlots. In case you didn't know, this is all about... Ro ro I always say roller derby. It's roller derby, isn't it? It's no, cool. roller derby's fine. Yeah. No, the derby. Americans obviously say derby. But yeah. we're I British, thought we had so. to call it derby. No, we, we, can, call we can call it Darby. All right. Let's talk about this uh, this bit of research you've done, because this is about body confidence at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes. Um, long story short, I've always sort of been interested in body confidence as a bigger woman, so, you know, I've always felt like being too big was, you know, a bad thing and all this sort of So it's something I've researched a lot over the last couple of years. Um, and one of our team members, Bunny Suicide, was actually sort of messing around the other day and drew a big smiley face on her belly um, and was sort of jiggling around a little bit. And just she's quite quite a confident lady and I just thought what a great thing that was that she was sort of just showing her belly a bit of love and stuff and so this idea was born of doing a bit of a campaign to just help people appreciate themselves a little bit more um and part of that was this infographic that we came came up with um so we basically did a survey of all our team members I think about 58 of our girls and, and, and men, Couple of men yeah re responded to it um and we just asked them questions sort of like how was their body confidence before roller derby? How was it afterwards? What they do like, what they don't like, and sort of like that. And then we compiled it into this um, sort of infographic chart thing, which was just really fascinating, to be honest, because roller derby as a general, because it's a sport that's very accepting of all sizes. We have very small people, we have very thin girls, we have very large girls and strong girls and just everything in between. So we're, as a, a group of women, we're quite... Diverse. On, on, yeah, and we're quite body confident... as. Mm. Not completely, but probably more than the general populace, I would imagine. I'd agree with that. Um, because this sport has given us that impetus to sort of appreciate what we can achieve in roller derby rather than how we look in roller derby. Mm. You know, so when we did the survey and we sort of got results that actually pretty much all across the board everybody's got issues and you know things like I think it was something like seventy six percent of the girls hate their stomachs and you know that was just a I mean, to me, I look at some of them and think, you've got an amazing body, you're beautiful, you're perfect, and then they don't, but they don't feel like that themselves. They've still got their own hang-ups. Why is that? Why do people feel like that? I, well, I mean, we asked the reasons. Um, a lot of people cited the media, which is always the big one, because we're constantly presented with these images. And I think we're so much more aware now that all the models are being photoshopped to within an inch of their lives, to the fact that they don't even resemble themselves anymore. And even though we're aware of it, we st I think we still buy into it. We still see the perfect skin. We still see the tiny, tiny little waists and the perfectly smooth thighs. And we still believe it somehow, even though we mm. consciously know. And I think that has a great effect. And, yeah, I think other people have a great influence, the comments that they make to you. People seem to think they have the, have the right to say, oh, you're a bit chunky today, or oh, aren't you skinny, or oh, look at those bones. You know, just mm. it's, it's acceptable to say that to other people, and I don't think it should be. It's a curious one, isn't it? You mentioned there the media, and, it, and I always think, you know, we seem to have a better understanding now that the media does that, and there's yeah. airbrushing, and, all, and it presents uh, an unrealistic image, if you like. We all know that, and yet it still plays such a big part. Yeah, we still think that's what we should look like in a weird way, you know. But Why don't we so, just let it go? Yeah, we're so, we're, such, we're so diverse. It's ridiculous, the idea that there should be one standard of beauty because everybody is a 100% is a original. Mm. So why should we try and achieve that? You know? I think it's our own personal, um, the way we think as well. I think sometimes it's very easy to get stuck in a, in a one track mind if the way the way that you think you know the net and being very negative about it and one thing that we were doing about the body confidence was that it's about changing the way you think it's about changing your personal thinking pattern because if you're negative towards yourself then you then sometimes that gravitates towards you for negativity from other people mm. so you've got to absolutely be if you're positive about yourself then it's like a smile a smile is is infectious. If, you, if you're confident, then other people will feel confident too. Mm. It is true, isn't it? Because the way you feel, say first thing in the morning, I've noticed if you look in the mirror and think, oh my goodness me, I just could do this, we could do it, it stays with you for, well, not just that day, mm. sometimes longer than that. 
What do you do with the research that you've got now, though? You did you did the research, you asked people why. What are you doing with it? Well, we've created a hashtag. So we've been encouraging people across um, social media to um, send us pictures, basically. I mean, obviously not everybody's comfortable with photographing themselves. You yeah. know, we don't want, we're not saying you have to take a picture of something you hate about yourself or anything like that. But, you know, it, be brave if you can. If not, just take a picture of you know, your workout gear, you've just had a great workout and your body feels great. And I think if you focus on how you feel rather than, you know, what's in the mirror or how you're thinking at that time, that can really help. So or we're encouraging people to maybe take a picture of their their dimply thighs that they've got cellulite on, which is 100% normal anyway, you know, and say, look, this is my thighs. My thighs carry, carry me around every day. Mm. They allow me to do things, you know. Mm. Focus on what's great about your body. And we had one photo... Um, by one of our ladies from the team, um, she sent us a picture of her of a tummy, didn't she? She's had she's had a little one, um, and she had stretch marks on her stomach and stuff like that. And that's absolutely natural, you know. She and her body is amazing because she was able to carry that little baby, um, and to be, her body was amazing to be able to do that. And she shared that with us, and we were absolutely over the moon that she was confident enough mm. to do that. And she called them her tiger stripes. Which yeah, and it was absolutely nice. lovely. And it's like completely normal. we've all done photos. I did one personally myself. I took one of my thigh. I didn't have the confidence to do it without with, with, bottom, with no bottoms on. I did it in my training gear with, and I, and I attached a, a smiley face on a post-it note and I stuck it to my thigh because um, I don't have the confidence to do it with, with no clothes on however I want to get on board, on board the campaign because Royal Derby has absolutely changed the way I think about myself 100% Is there any way that you could post these pictures and be anonymous or I know with, with Facebook and Twitter and things like that you don't always have to use your name do you? You could use a, a made up name a pseudonym something like that I mean we're happy to take them by email if people are more comfortable with doing that um, Absolutely and then we can always just say from anonymous, you know, we, we can always get it out into our social media mm. via our own means and not, not name people if that's what they really want so to do. We're on pretty much everything. We've got Instagram, we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, we've got yeah. websites, so, mm. and they're all going up everywhere. Um, I think the main aim, though, isn't it? It's, it's about saying, this is me, you know, my name's such and such, this is me, I'm happy about this part of my body because this is who I am. Yeah. So it's, I think, it's not, it, although it would be nice to have people send, send us photos if they want to be anonymous... Um, for their own personal reasons, that's fine. However, I think it would be nice if we could if we could have people stand up and say, "I'm beautiful for this reason." Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But, um, Ab- absolutely, it's perfect in a way. You know. I'm getting the sense that quite a lot of people are talking about their stomachs for all kinds of reasons. What about other parts of the body? Are there are other bits you mentioned there. You, your legs. Yeah. Other bits that that you know are a common theme, if you like. Yeah, definitely. I think thighs is quite a big one. Yeah, bum um, was a big one. Arm is a big one. Um, I think personally for me it was arms. arms yeah, arms. Like, there. You know, a bit of extra. Was that upper up arms? Because a lot, of, I know a lot of people talk arms. about you know yeah, the arms, bingo, bingo wings, wings, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's things like yeah, that. Yeah, things like that. Okay, we'll talk more in just a tick, and uh, we'll bring in a life and body confidence coach uh, and author into the equation as well. If you want to get in touch about this, feel free. Nine three four three four three four. You can text as well. Not any message. Eight one triple three. You've heard already from Jenny and Nicola. We're talking about body confidence. Uh, back to uh, the pair of them in a few moments' time. I want to bring in Astrid Longhurst in the meantime, who's a life and body confidence coach and author. Hello, Astrid. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah. I know we've been talking a little bit about men, but it seems to me that, that women in particular are pretty hard on themselves. Would you agree? Absolutely. Do you know, I was just listening to Jenny and Nicola, and what they said was just joyful to hear. Absolutely brilliant, because for me, body confidence is fundamental to living your best life. If you don't like parts of your body, if you're unhappy with bits of yourself, then you hold back from life. I did it for so long in my own um, journey to love my myself, my body, and it's just you spend so much time dissecting different parts of your body and feeling dreadful, and then you don't engage with life. You don't go to the party. You don't, um, you know, uh, take the opportunities that are offered. You look in the mirror. As you were saying earlier, I loved it when you said, like, you look in the mirror and you, you, you uh, feel down about yourself, and then your whole day is affected. Yes. And, and, and the impact, I don't, I, you know, it cannot be underestimated. And what's wonderful is to hear people like Jenny and Nicola doing such brilliant work on saying, look, come on, um, you have to fall in love with yourself. So is that, is that the key to, to basically persuade yourself that, hang on a minute, 
there's nothing wrong with with my tummy because uh, I think it was it was Nicola who said you know it's safe you've been a mum you've carried a baby in that tummy it's it's changing yeah. your perspective yeah and how wonderful that is just look at what you did with your tummy. I mean, that is a miracle. That's extraordinary. So every time you look at your tummy, you go, oh, wow, look what you gave me. Rather than, look how you don't match up to somebody else's tummy. Hmm. That's their tummy. Uh, you know, if, uh, there was one thing I was going to say I was very interested in. You were talking about the media and, and where does this all start? And one of the, I don't know whether it, this would be useful, but one of the biggest tips that helped me was to question your thinking. So that when you say things like, you know, I hate my stomach or I hate my thighs, is to just stop a moment and hear what you're saying and then say to yourself, well, really? Is it really true? Do I? Because so very just, often... Just you, take a step back by sick Absolutely. Yeah. Stop listening. Because very often what we're doing is we're repeating old stories. And these old stories about ourselves and our bodies come from the past. I always remember with me, you know, I was right from a little girl. I was, I was always chubby. And I was always told, oh, Astrid, you have such a pretty face. It's such a shame you're so big. <gasps> I know, I know. And so you see, the thing is, like as a child, I couldn't intellectualize that. I couldn't say, oh, well, that's just somebody else's opinion and it doesn't make it true. What you do as a child, and this goes for everything that we are, the messages that we're given, we believe it because these are people that we look up to and we love and we're trying to fit in. And so when somebody that you love and they don't do it, you know, I'm not saying that they do it deliberately to hurt you. It's just, oh gosh, you're so big. You've got a pretty face. Shame your body doesn't match up. Goodness. How long does does this take? Because I can hear a lot of people saying, look, this all sounds like perfect common sense to me, but how long does that process take? You have to do it. You have to live it. It's work. Um, You have to, I think body confidence is a choice and it's a choice you have to make every single day. It's a choice about waking up in the the morning and looking in the mirror and, you know, giving yourself a wink or smiling or just saying good morning. Most of us just ignore ourselves. You know, we potter into the shower, we grab whatever we're going to grab. You know, we, we... go into our day without really saying hi how am I feeling um what's my intention today I sort of now you know I would wake up in the morning and I'd first thing I'd say is gosh thank you I've got another day I'll be lucky to be alive in these bodies that we have um you know that makes it glorious but then I'd say sort of so how am I going to live today you know no matter what happens in my day I'm going to do my best I'm going to love me I'm going to show up for me in my life I'm going to have a good relationship with me today i'm not going to put myself down well said i i like the idea of all of that fantastic astrid it's been fascinating talking with you thank you astrid longhurst who's a life and body confidence coach and author